Hey, Composite Gloves here, and today we're going to be talking about the filter envelope, the amplitude envelope, and the contour knob. So let's go ahead and dive into this. This can get a little dicey with Monarch just because of the way it's been set up. It's just confusing the way they've done this, but I will make it make sense to you. I already, I assume that you already have a pretty good grasp on envelopes, so we can go ahead and talk about things without having to like reiterate super basic concepts. So let's start with what do these things control? The filter envelope controls the value of the cutoff knob. And the way they've done this in Monarch is they've given us the ability to take the filter envelope's output and tell the cutoff knob to increase or decrease over time via the contour knob. So here we've got contour and we can say how much we wanted to either add. So we could take these values and add them to where the cutoff knob currently is. So if we had our cutoff knob all the way off, we could tell the values to increase over time, despite the cutoff knob being down, or we can tell them to subtract from the cutoff knob's position. So they will, it will decrease over time, and we can tell the range of this via the contour knob. Okay, so that, that should make sense. Now we're gonna talk about the amplitude envelope first because it's just simpler to grasp, and then we'll move into this relationship because yeah, it's just confusing to think about at first glance. So let's go ahead and move over to the amplitude envelope. And this envelope is in a weird way. So it looks like it's an ADS envelope. Like that's what it looks like the stages are in. But it's really ASD. I know. I'm sorry that this had to happen to you. But this is what has happened. So I also want to point out that there is a amplitude master volume here. That's going to become important because you may confuse it with a sustain knob later on. So let's start with just the basics. Like in this particular case, I think it's good to start there, despite my warning at the beginning, just so that you're familiar and will understand what I'm saying the first go around. So as I increase this value, I am saying over time, in this case, 600 milliseconds, increase in volume until we reach the, that after 600 milliseconds, we will reach our sustained volume, at which point, if I hold down my note, it will sustain for that value. It will completely ignore this decay stage, right? So if I was to open up like a massive, for example, and just, just to show you, because massive will, has this, I swear massive is on here somewhere, and it's loading. Okay, cool. And open up an envelope. After looking at Monarch for so long, it's kind of weird to see massive. So we see here that we have an attack, and then we can set the level of that attack. It happens before the decay stage. So we see attack, so oh, turn on over time, and then we have it there. Okay, cool, that makes sense. This is the same way. So just letting you know, this happens before that. And so over time we'll reach this, and as long as I'm holding down the note, it will not proceed on to the next stage of the envelope. It will stay at that stage. So in the other one, it was called level because it would still proceed on to the decay stage. And then in massive, it would actually reach a sustained stage afterwards. In this case, not so. So if I play a note, you'll hear it rise in volume and sustain at that level. As long as I'm holding the note, I'm going to turn my cutoff off so that not to be confused. And I turn it. Now let's go ahead and see what would happen if I remove the sustain knob. So at this point, you might be saying, well, what's it rising to? Like, what, what is it going to sustain at? And the answer is this value up here. So I, I was talking that you might get this confused, but the sustain value is the level it should sustain at. This value is the value that it's actually rising to. So a little bit of confusing. But you see, it even has a help hand controls the volume of the master level. It also acts as the attacks value that it rises to. So if we hold it, now we hear that it chops off. That's the decay. So the decay says, hey, you reached the value, turn off. Now, what would be interesting is if we turn this up and then tell it to reach a value smaller, what would happen here? Because now we've essentially said, well, a rise in volume to this level, but only sustain at this level. So we would expect something to happen with the decay. So let's give it a test, see what happens. And we see the decay now acts accordingly. So I, I hope I didn't just break any of your minds because I feel like someone watched this and just didn't get it. Basically, as whenever the sustain value is above this value, it will ignore the decay knob. When this value is below this value, it will obey the decay knob. It'll pay attention to what the decay knob has to say. 
That's all I'm saying. So if we have this all the way up, it's clearly above this. At least I hope it is. So let's go ahead and play it. But if we just decrease it to below this level, like we could have this much higher up and take this down. And then we can hear the sustain is still occurring at the level it is. So now it's behaving sort of the way you would expect it to behave. But there's a relationship between these that go sort of un unspoken. So yeah, I wish there was just something a little more straightforward than this method, like a graphical representation they do in other sense, but there is not because it's, you know, they're trying to be all fancy and just like the other stuff. We don't want to make it any easier on you. So, okay, that makes sense. So we have our attack, our sustain, our decay, and we understand this rather complicated relationship. So, all right, cool. And this only applies to the amplitude envelope because it's it's the amplitude, like amplitude, amplitude, like they're related. Okay, and so if we want to make like, for example, a pluck sound, we could turn the sustain down. We could have our, our attack be rather quick and we could have our decay be rather slow. And then here you go, maybe we want a tighter plug sound. So cool. Now you might be saying about these values on the edge, you might be prone to think, oh, these values have to be like accurate. And I'm gonna tell you right now, if you put it on one second, it definitely sounds like it's longer than a second. You see, that felt like way longer than one second. So I wouldn't count on using these actual values. Use your ears. These things are, I think this may just be for looks. I don't know if they like went through and like tested this, but that one second decay sounds like a way longer decay. I don't know if I set something up weird and maybe someone's going to point it out, feel dumb later, but I'm pretty sure the values are just wrong. So just use your ears. They are good rough markers and you can see that they are indicating that they do approach a value of 10 seconds, which is probably true. So cool. It's probably said somewhere in the manual. I'm just not going to go look it up. So, all right, cool. That's really nifty. Now, what about the release? You know, when you let go of a note, does it have a release time? Can you set that up? That's yes. So this bottom release goes to the amplitude envelope. And what it does is when it's off, it's a fraction of this. It's a fractional value of your decay setting. When it's on, it is the value of your decay setting. So if I have it set, we'll just say that this is accurate for now. If I have it set at 600, then the release will also be 600 milliseconds when I let go. So you can hear that it takes time to release. I just tap the key. So I tap and you hear that it is now taking on the value of the decay where before it was only a mere fraction of the decay, which was very short, it basically a gate. But I also, this is still a monophonic synth. So it's even with the decay going on, it, or the release, I mean, the release part of the envelope going on, it's still got to make a decision when a new note comes along. And we've talked about that in one of the very first videos where we were talking about the keyboard setting here. I believe it was on the control video. Yeah, it was the control video where we talk about the behavior of retriggering envelopes. Okay, now let's move into the filter envelope. So we got a pretty good grasp of this. Now with the filter envelope, I like to think of it as we have two time controls and we have again, the mysterious sustain setting, which plays another role in this one. And my voice did a weird crackly thing right there. We talked about the key tracking in the previous video when we were talking about the cutoff knob and the filters and all that good stuff, as well as the video on the self oscillation and feedback. So I'm not gonna talk about these knobs, should be plenty clear what those knobs do now. So, okay, cool. So what we can do here is we can say, oh, we can say over time, let me give you just the most straightforward example I can. So we're gonna say that these values are gonna add to the cutoff knob. That's what I've configured here, I've said plus. And now let's say I, my cutoff is all the way off. So right now my filter is slamming it, saying I'm filtering you out. And now let's say, okay, I want to add the values to this degree. So I've given this envelope this amount of control over this cutoff knob, if that makes sense. And I've told the values to be added to where the cutoff knob's current position is. Now I could say, that I want, so these two values dictate how this knob interacts. So I could say, we could put it at a value of five, and I could say, I want the value of five, you gotta use your ear for this, but I want the value of five to be added to this. And at this point, I've said, I want the value of five to be added to this 
in zero milliseconds and subtracted in zero milliseconds. So this isn't a very realistic setting. It's just going to be a, a, a click sound from our filter. And I'm going to turn our attack and decay in a, over here in my sustain all the way up. So it should be just a long tone. But we, we get that click. If you hear it at the beginning, it goes... And so, okay, cool. So we hear this is working. Now what I can say is... Over the course of one second, which we've determined is not accurate, but over the course of one second, I want this amount of dominion to be added. So this amount will be added by however this amount, which you would set by ear, to the cutoff knob. So we would expect the filter to open up over the course of this second. And then as soon as it reaches this second, it will decay by this amount, which would just go away. In this case, this is also the sustain, so now you might be wondering, well, is it going to decay or is it going to sustain? Because we have this freaking weird relationship. I actually haven't looked to see if it's re related to this knob, which I probably should, or to the, the master output, because maybe it is for some weird reason. But uh, I've always just kind of said this by ear, and I have enough of an idea of how this stuff works to, to get what I want. But as I open it up, So you see that we decrease back down to our value here. And so you might be saying, well, how do I get it to sustain at that value? Well, what's happening is this contour knob has only been given this amount of dominion. We can actually give it more dominion. And now the sustain will be added to this. Uh, let me just show you. It's, it's just a confusing thing to a degree. And we see that our sustain that was here is now being given the dominion needed to increase the value. Whereas before at halfway, it, it was not given that dominion. So hopefully this is making sense and you can sort of get this desired result. So let's say that, oh, okay, well, if I had, if I uh, increase my sustain value, we would expect it to, because we've increased this, but kept this sustain, we would expect that endpoint to increase. And it does because we've increased the amount that we are simply adding to the cutoff knob. And these are simply controls over time. So we increased, 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 decreased, but then our sustain kicks in, which was given more dominion than the decay can overcome. So now let's go ahead and decrease this. Let's make a sort of a pluck sound, right? But our sustain is too high. And so this is the biggest problem with, with these things. So you can change the contour, the sustain to fix this. I'm just gonna move the sustain down. Pretty cool. So now, okay, let's look at, so that's addition. Very easy, it's a simple deal, right? Yeah, it's kind of simple. Uh, it's not that simple in my opinion, but you know, it's simple. So now we're gonna move over to subtraction. Now, if we do this, now we don't hear anything. You might be going, what's going on? Well, we've actually moved the cutoff knob beyond this position. We are taking its current value and subtracting it by the same behavior. So in order to hear this, we need to have it at a point where when subtracting, we would still hear the cutoff. So let me say that one more time. Right now, it's right here, right? These values, we've been told, we've told it, we can even say this, over time, over the course of one second, subtract this amount of value by this amount of dominion. So it's gonna go, woo, I mean, it's gonna turn down even more. Pretend the knob just keeps going down. And in this case, uh, it would, it's, it's gonna, it's cutoff is actually gonna go lower. So we'd actually have to increase it so that when it's told to go down, we can still hear the effect. So you can see it actually turning off over time. And you hear the decay now, instead of the decay turning our filter off, it'll actually turn the filter back on. So it's kind of just this interesting relationship, but that's the contour knob. That's how it works. I, I tend to stay with things that are a little simpler to think about, such as the plus, but occasionally you may find yourself wanting the negative side for for a reason, maybe you need a particular sort of attack or release. And because they're trying to stick to, you know, they're, they're doing the whole modeling and realistic thing, they've deliberately limited you, which can be very creative because you're forced to do things differently. So I'm not against this approach. It'd be kind of nice to have, you know, other methods where you could overcome these things. And I suppose you could go in and attempt to edit the ensemble. I'm not sure if they took some degree of encoding stuff or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I've, I'm not dug into the bottom end of this. I, I've always worked on the top side. But if anyone is like more into reactor and stuff, you could probably go in and, and let us know if you even can do stuff like that. But anyways, that's that. 
that's the envelopes. And at this point, you should actually be fine and familiar with every single button and knob on the front panel. This one over here is simply the same deal for the decay knob as this one was to this decay knob. So this does this, the same deal. Uh, so that's that. Uh, that's uh, that's the front end of Monarch. You know, you should have some idea of how to accomplish all these things that we've covered so far. If you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe, support me on Patreon, and have a blessed day. <laughs>